everyone welcome to episode number four of the random cloud chats podcast this was a good one we started off talking about um you know how our weeks are going but we also dove into a screenshot that Rishabh sent me about layoffs at microsoft you know it hits a little bit uh close to home for me so we spoke about that then we dove into tools that we use for uh, productivity, what kind of machines we use, what kind of setups do we have, uh, stuff that's specific to more of a like, productivity stack and then stuff that's more specific to our tech stack and you know creating technical things, uh, even hardware stuff. Like I talk about this light that's like super useful to me. And we got community questions, uh, questions about boot camps and things like that. Overall, great pod. So let's dive right into it. Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of Ramden Cloud Chats powered by Learn to Cloud. Again, the Cloud Duo is back this week. And today we are talking about top tools that we use or kind of our tech stack that we use uh, to get work done or, you know, our daily go-to tools. So we'll start with the same team where we'll do a weekly update and we'll talk about recent events and then go into what tools do we use hey Gwen. yeah what's up dude episode four that's awesome so mm-hmm. far a month of doing this i think the workflow that we're getting in there's still a lot to polish and still a lot to figure out but i think we're getting into a workflow that's very manageable and very doable and it doesn't feel like a chore and I think that's great. I don't know. How do you feel? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm I'm on the same page. Um, I think we have gotten into that, you know, we're still building that habit, but it's not like, a, yeah, yeah, you defined it really good. It's not, it doesn't feel like a chore. It's, it's more of a, you know, we sit on a call and we discuss about all things tech. Um, <laughs> last, last week's episode was great. And I it was. it was personally my favorite. And I, I loved seeing just, people's reactions to it in the comments mm-hmm. and people just enjoying it with us. And I'm starting to see people who like start their, start their weeks off with our pod. Like I, I had, a, I was tagging a couple of Instagram stories, people just like, you know, having breakfast, watching us. Oh, on nice. YouTube. It's, it's so cool. You know, it's like, we get to hang out with all them. I think that's, that's really cool. I was really, um, you know, happy to see the comments of people recognizing how much work you've put in because uh, mm. i feel like you're just you just never give yourself enough credit you're always like i mean you're super humble but i think you're really also like really hard on yourself but having other people kind of come in and be like yeah look at where you're at now and i, th- I think that was like great and that made me like really happy to see um and it, it was also interesting to see just people laughing with us like i remember i did um like an impression of you and someone in yes. Discord was like, it was yeah, so yeah, funny yeah. to hear GPS's <laughs> impression of Rishabh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was it was good. Really happy to be doing this. And I'm, I'm so glad we actually were, were doing this and happy that everyone's, you know, supporting us. And it's great. I did I did want to say, all right, I guess we could recap on our on our week first. I have, dude, I so I'm packing. You can see like my back. Yeah. So for people, like typically I have, artwork on here i took all that down and moved a lot of stuff from the background i want i want to take these down Mm -hmm. i was going to but i have 12 videos to record before friday so i need to have something in the background i can't be just plain white because i feel like it'll just be too too harsh of a background so i kept those up but yeah i've been packing this past week still working on serverless um serverless september finally updated the project repo to work with dotnet 6 and just a bunch of like vs code tools and such uh, so I'm getting started on that. I started on that yesterday, uh, the actual recording of that stuff. I think the way that project is going to come out, going to roll out, I think it's going to be, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, then I'm moving, uh, found a new place. I'm going to go to Queens. I know like two episodes ago and even on my YouTube video, I was like, I'm going to move back to Connecticut. But then I decided like, I ah, just enjoy my freedom and just being alone. I'm just so used mm-hmm. to it now that I could not give that up even if it was for like maybe just a year or so i'd rather go somewhere that yeah it might be further away from work and i'll have to commute a little bit more um and maybe the building isn't as like super fancy mm-hmm. cuz i essentially live in like a luxury building now um but i'll have more space it'll be quieter uh, definitely it'll be different pace and it's cheaper so that's important mm-hmm. <laughs> So yeah, move, between dude, moving is so chaotic. So between moving and then doing the serverless September stuff, that's essentially been my week. Um, yeah, I think so. 
Oh, and then and then you sent me a screenshot last night, and we'll talk about that a little <laughs> later. <laughs> but how's your week been? Um, it's it's been good. It's been good, apart from last night. <laughs> you you um, were freaking out last but night. But <laughs> yeah, I think I finally, you know, have. I'm about to hit that 90 day mark next week. Nice. Dude, that went uh, back quick. It went. Yeah, I was I was talking to you know um, colleagues and stuff. Um, there were a few who joined like six months ago or mm-hmm. eight months ago, and um, we were just going over like how long it has been for me. And I said, "Oh, it's almost you know." And then I started calculating. I'm like, "I'm almost done probation. It's it's I'm gonna hit that 90 day mark." And That's like crazy. that went so fast because they said we, we we. I also still think it's only been like you know a month here. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I guess. Um, so I'm getting used to, you know, the workflows and I love that how, you know, I have a like a blank playing field because, you know, being first um, evangelist in Canada, you, there mm-hmm. are a lot of things you, you get to figure out on your own. Yeah. So a lot of events uh, that I'm looking up to, but mainly excited about, you know, our August meetup and um, some time to relax uh, in New York. Um, we'll probably, you know, uh, grab yeah. some great food. Uh, yeah, and then sure. also dude i'm gonna take you everywhere like if my so a lot of people are very excited that you're coming including my brother and my parents my brother and my parents love rishab by the way um <laughs> so my brother was like oh yeah when when i'm in town and then rishab's in town too we gotta go get korean barbecue so we're gonna definitely do that my family love barbecues and then my parents mm-hmm. were like you should have them come over like on sunday and you know we can have a, like a little you know cookout here barbecue here so you're going to be eating a lot of meat okay. <laughs> and a lot of food in general. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good time. I'm going to take you around to all the spots. It's like, it's like The good thing is like it's summer, so we don't have to worry about the cold like we were dealing with the other time, though. Um, yeah. No, awesome. for sure. Nine yeah, and then, Twilio. yeah, for Tulio, yeah, I have a super class in Boston uh, in September. What's a super uh, class? So it's basically, it's developer-focused, I want to say but you know students can still participate but you basically have a three to four hour you know demos with twilio so go it starts from you know really scratch how twilio apis work and then we end up building something at the end um we also have twilio quest in it so twilio quest is you know our kid style game that teaches you about you know rest Mm -hmm. apis how webhooks work and then how Twilio comes into play with all of these technologies. So it's Very an ARKit cool. game. We play that uh, for an R. So you're, yeah, you're uh, delivering? So like you're the instructor or the, or are you yes. a student? No, I'm, I'm instructing or I'm, I'll be, you know, the the one that will be giving it. So it, cool. it is in Boston, in Boston? on when? September 20th. So you're going to be in, in Boston for you know how long yeah i'm planning to be there for three days so you're gonna have any free time i'll come to boston and we can go get boston has great seafood okay okay yeah and if it's like over if you tell me the day and it aligns and i don't have anything that day or if it's i could take the day off we could probably like sure have some yeah time in boston i've been there before i used to work the the tech the help desk uh-huh. place that i worked at was headquartered in boston so i would go every quarter and i got to like explore a little bit um but yeah, cool. it's cool. Yeah, so, this will know, be my my first time. So, you know, what I was gonna to say me. your your three months at Twilio went by, in my opinion, faster than the Google time. I don't know. If you I, feel I feel that so way. too. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For me, it makes sense because you know how yeah, I was. <laughs> the, the work is different, of course, and you 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 enjoy a lot more what you're doing now. But yeah, maybe it could also have been like. Maybe the difference between like winter and summer. Uh, I don't know. Summer mm. always feels a little bit more of like fast pace and whatnot. But yeah. yeah, I also think they're like the you know the in person events kind of catching up also made yeah. you know a play in that. Um, is yeah, but yeah, yeah it, it went by really fast. Um, and but yeah, that's that's what I'm looking forward to. So I was preparing you know um, stuff around that, and yeah um Dude, otherwise the week has been chill look at you from like not being able to answer help desk calls needing <laughs> to help from the sales team to going on and delivering full-on in-person events and you and then you're doing one here at the reactor 
Uh, mm-hmm. Then you could do one in Boston, and you did one back in what was like a month ago. Yes. And I think it was Toronto. Yeah, yeah, the Collision yeah. Con. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you, man. Anyway, um, all right, mental health check. So you got a lot going on in terms of like working on stuff. How are, mm-hmm. how are you? How are you feeling? Like, um, six. So six. What were, what were you last week? <laughs> seven. <laughs> Wait, but okay. So b- before sending me that screenshot that you sent me yesterday, what were you? Oh, um, probably eight. <laughs> okay, two. <four. laughs> but I have I have a good reason. I have a good yeah. reason. So the reason why it went up by one point is so I added a new habit which I couldn't couldn't commit to yesterday and I decided to open my phone at 12 in the midnight <laughs> because I sent that screenshot to Gwen and we'll talk about the screenshot Dude, yeah, we'll yeah, call yeah. it the screenshot, the screenshot. Um, at 12 22 I think I sent you that screenshot um, yeah. and and then you know because when I see stuff like that I am a rabbit like I go down the rabbit hole of you know searching <laughs> sources if this is true and stuff yeah but before that um i have built a habit of reading something before going to bed instead of you know scrolling phone. through my phone okay and cool. that puts me to sleep good Super but yeah helpful. i couldn't do it yesterday I was yeah. able to do it. So I was reading something and then, you know, yeah. I was, I wanted to go to the restroom and I picked up my phone. I don't know why I picked it up. Dude, you got to hide it. I used to, I used to charge my phone in a complete, when I had a different room, which is also why I'm excited to have this, this place I'm going into is it's like a two bedroom. So I can have all my electronics in one room and away from my bedroom. That way I'm not distracted mm-hmm. by anything. Mm-hmm, Cause it's mm-hmm. hard dude. like, even though you build a habits, like one little thing can make you like, you know, slip up and whatnot. But yeah. I used to read this when I couldn't sleep. There's this there's this book called um sorry, I can't read that on Apple Watch. What the heck, Siri? Um it is called uh I think it's like story stories of our lives. There's that movie called Arrival. Have you seen it? It's, no. it's Arrival. It's based on a s- short story that's part of this book with like a bunch of short stories. And Okay. I used to read that story because I knew it in and out. Like I, mm. I knew it by heart, so I could read it and it kind of like put me to sleep. But I, I find that when you, like some people have shows that they've seen entirely and that's sort of like a comfort thing, right? Because you don't, there's nothing new. There's nothing that's going to like I see. bring in yep. your, bring in your intention or keep you awake. It's more so like, you know what's going to happen. Um, it's not going to like wake you up or anything like that. So you can just like ease, it eases you into sleep. Um, so like, yes, yeah, these things that like provide you comfort, I think are great for like going to sleep, but um all right so you're at a six ten but mainly because of the screenshot and we'll talk about the screenshot in a second um mm-hmm. i think i'm at a where i'm at, like right now I'm, I'm like pretty good i think i'm just like a seven um i just got off the phone with like some moving stuff that is kind of frustrating me but oh if not i would have been probably a little better but mm-hmm. yeah overall I'm, I'm doing pretty well I, I mean as soon as i get these videos done and i get all these moving stuff done i'll be like i was gonna ask better. like what is is this your personal stuff like the 12 videos no no, no. it's for several september oh, okay. so um and i'm i'm doing it in a way where so there's a github repo that these videos are based on this oh, i see ten, 10 individual challenges and i'm gonna do a video per each and then there's introduction and con- conclusion uh, mm. videos and then that way people can step through each step like okay i'm at this step this is this video so i'm trying to make mm-hmm. it as like so there's no way for you to get stuck but if there's a way that you, that you get stuck, or if you do get stuck, you have a question, whenever there's gonna be places for you to come and ask questions and such. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was like running through the material. I know how to do. I just have to like record. But also at the same time, since I'm moving out of this apartment, obviously the building is showing the apartment for people who potentially want to rent. So it's very disruptive. It's like, oh, we're gonna be that one. Uh, oh, we're gonna yeah. be there at three. True. Are we gonna True. Do that? I'm like, ah. Oh. And even though it's quick, it's like they spend five minutes. It's still like it gets me out of the flow. So I'm trying Definitely, to like work around yeah. that, which is why I moved this pod to the to the morning. We're recording earlier today, so if we sound different yeah, if, because of that. If you're seeing me sipping coffee, it's because oh, dude, we're, me too. <laughs> we're me recording too. it too early. Yeah, but um yeah, I'm just trying to like manage with all these things that are going on. But overall pretty good. Um yeah, I think now it's time to talk about this glorious screenshot. So 
you sent like you said you sent it to me all right so the screenshot is of the blind app we've been talking about the blind app <laughs> we should get them into sponsors <laughs> we've been talking about the blind app for the past two weeks i think so mm -hmm. and rishab sent it to me and it's like microsoft microsoft the ties like microsoft layoffs and then the body of the actual post is yeah 300 people were laid off half were engineering so 150 people um and you sent that to me at midnight i saw it earlier i think i saw it maybe around four in the morning because that's when i was um i woke up and then i immediately thought like oh man rishab's gonna be stressing about this i we can dive a little bit more into like my feelings about this because you know i actually work at microsoft yeah so this is more so um like i it's closer to home for me but mm -hmm. i think in terms of like moving forward i like i really want to focus on like talking about like layoffs and hiring freezes and such just the stuff that's like very very relevant to us because i feel like if not we're gonna drag the audience down and they're gonna get like I don't know, paranoid with us. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So, but this one is relevant, so let's talk about it. So, yeah. So, tell me. So, you said you were, you know, you went to get to the bathroom, you grabbed your phone, and that's when you saw it. Yeah. What, what was like your initial your initial thought? Um. So the way the notification showed up is, you know, just a title. So I just saw Microsoft layoffs. That's it. Damn. So I was like, shit. In my mind, I was like 10 percent, 20. What is the percentage? So I opened yeah. it up. Um, and then, you know, they said 300 people were laid off, um, half of which was engineering. They didn't specify a location and the comments were, this post was made, I think like few, maybe one or two hours ago until I checked it. Yeah. But I have never seen, you know, a more engaging thread on blind, like, mm -hmm. because people were, you know obviously who worked at Microsoft, they were like, oh, which department, which org, what location, you know? Um, so that, because everybody was paranoid, um, given I don't even work at Microsoft, but I know Gwen does. So I was like, shit, <laughs> like which department it is, tell us. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, um, I didn't see, you know, any replies from, I think they posted it and went to sleep uh, yeah. kind of situation. And yeah, um, I was just like, oh shit. Like now, you know, there's, there are people that are going to be impacted that are close to me. Yeah. Um, and that was my initial reaction. I, I knew that you wouldn't, you, you, you would be sleep, but I was <laughs> like, I, I'm still going to send it. Um, did, after you saw that post, did you like try to search more, like more info about yeah. it? Yeah, I went on. Um, you know, I did quick Google searches. I couldn't get anything. I think it was pretty, you know, as I said, I think that person saw the email or if they were labeled off or something, mm -hmm. and then they decided to post it on blind. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see anything at, you know, um, uh, in the night, uh, regarding covered by, you know, big, uh, news, news companies. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, um, this is not yet covered. Um, checked reddit i couldn't find anything related to microsoft um and reddit is you know i think it's a mess when you you're trying to search something so yeah <laughs> i was like okay i'm just gonna go to sleep and like look back tomorrow and till that time you know there will be new sources that will cover this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right so i'm gonna try to approach this two ways mm -hmm. the emotional way and then the like i guess objective yeah. way because you know we we t we think that way like first of all this sucks it sucks you know it's 300 people regardless if they're all engineering half engineering non engineering mm -hmm. it, it's still 300 people like i don't really care about the split um you know it's 300 people that um have to like figure out a lot now in and who knows what else they have going on in their lives cuz we tend to think about like Oh, they, you know, they're losing their jobs, but there could be a significant amount of things outside of work that are going on with these people and adding this Definitely. is not going to make any of it easier. So that sucks. Um, yeah, I, I, I feel for them. I think I, so I know when there are these kinds of things b because it seems like, all right, so none of this is verified. I'm also just basing myself off like new sources and such like this. Mm -hmm. and the way things like this have been handled before but usually it seems like it's from a reorg and just them finding roles that just weren't necessary anymore so it seems okay. like some people were given options to find other spots and there's like amount of time mm 
Mm -hmm. It's like a Mm -hmm. period of time where it's like, okay, go and go and like, you know, find another team that you might be able to work on and whatnot. Right. It's not a guarantee that you'll be able to find another spot, but there's time and an opportunity there for you to go and do that. So that gives me a little bit of hope. So, okay, potentially people can find spots here. I mean, we're, we're over a hundred thousand people. Like we have that many roles. Like I feel like if there's any place that you want to find a different role that's a better fit for you or that is a fit for you in general, I think you'll have a good chance of finding that here unless you don't want to be at Microsoft then of course. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's that. Uh, I don't really know any details about um, like severance or if people were furloughed instead of being like laid off. I don't really know any of those details either. Apparently it was an org that was like purchased so like we acquired uh, a company and then that team came on and whatnot and i don't really know okay. again this is all just stuff that i read uh, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't i'm not verifying any of this information so from the like facts i guess is so we just ended our f- uh our, year, our fiscal year in june so mm-hmm. you know that's why we reported all our numbers and stuff a couple of weeks ago or i think that was like Two weeks ago, last last week, something like that. Yeah, Rev, you know when we report revenue and all that kind of stuff. That's because you know fiscal year it ended a couple months before. They gather all the data and whatnot. So in any company, that is the time where you kind of reevaluate. Like, what do we need to add? Mm-hmm, what do we need mm-hmm. to cut? Where do we need to spend more? Where do we need to spend less? So, you know, t- seeing like hiring or like layoffs or whatnot, or people getting fired it, around this time isn't. It's not like a completely weird thing for any company. Um, but I think it's heightened because of, you know, freezes happening everywhere, laying layoffs yeah. happening everywhere because of the recession or potential recession. I don't know, like economists and like people who do this for a living can't agree on if we're in a recession or not because that the definition of recession keeps changing. So I'm mm. going to keep saying recession or potential recession because I'm not an expert there. Um so yeah, the, the the so when you sent it to me, I was like, first off, like, all right, I know Rishab's gonna be freaking out because I I, know, I think he's probably gonna be worried about me. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, I'll read about this in the in the later on. So then I went back to sleep. Um, but yeah, I think with Microsoft being so large, um, <clears throat> we're like, you know, that's like one percent of our our staff, I would say. Um, it's i just again it's just the mindset of like i feel like anyone at any point can get cut can be yeah reason. it's still that like um and i'm not allowing it to sort of dictate my life or anything like that mm-hmm. um and if if anything it just reminds me that i'm grateful that i have different sources of income um and whatnot but yeah i, I it sucks but i'm not letting it be like oh this is like the end of the world like oh if microsoft is laying off then that means like you know things are just headed towards yeah uh, like the complete bottom like i don't feel that way either um Mm -hmm. it just seems like you know at the end of the day it's a business and it was a business move and it just sucks that impacts like a good any if it impacts one person that sucks but yeah you know i can't let it dictate my life right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nope that makes sense yeah um But that's good that you know there there was still an opportunity to you know move. Yeah, they typically do that when, especially when there's like employees who want to stay and like in the, yeah. the and it's not like a performance thing. It's more mm-hmm. so like okay, this role just we don't need it anymore. We don't like, need it. Yeah. Where can we? Yeah, it's not like oh you're we need this role and you're terrible at it. Mm-hmm. That, like it's there's a difference between being fired being furloughed being laid off all these kinds of things right yeah um so yeah it's there's also a difference thing. i guess now between being laid off and being laid off due to a reorg um, yeah yeah there's there's that too yeah. i mean re- reorgs happen all the time at microsoft mm-hmm. it's like i remember the other day i was talking to um someone i consider a mentor who's been at microsoft for like 22 years and i think mm-hmm. he's told me he's been through 17 reorgs and I was like, what? <laughs> um, so, you know, it's like, a, it's like a thing. It happens all the time here. Um, oftentimes people are get sh- are shuffled around. 
I wasn't shuffled around with the last reorg, but I wouldn't be surprised if another one happened and then I was shuffled around. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if I was laid off, to be honest. Um, I Is it probable? I don't know. Is it possible? Of course. But yeah. hey, it's like it's the nature of working anywhere, really. Like, just keep, remember that. Just you You have a job that you can be let go of or fired for no reason mm-hmm. whatsoever. You can be the absolute best. So, yeah, anyway, that's the notorious screenshot. Rishab needs to turn off <laughs> notifications on blind. <laughs> yeah, I need to. Yeah, but um, um, on a lighter note, do we want to dive into the the main topic for today's episode? I think it's a sure. fun one. It's We're going to get, a li- I guess, a little technical, but more so, like, I think, I think, um, people in tech like we seem to be just such nerds for like tools and gear and mm-hmm, things like mm-hmm. that um and you know we're, we're always looking for like what's the best thing that's gonna or what's the next thing that's gonna improve my workflow and whatnot um so i'm happy i'm happy we're gonna talk about this and kind of kind of do something a little bit different than all the career focused stuff that we've been doing definitely yeah 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 so we start. we're gonna talk about tools and i think the way we'll go is We'll, we'll start with our stack, I guess, like basic of, you know, what's at our desk. And okay. then at the end, I want you to, you know, rate your top five. Oh, it's going to be tough. Okay, cool. So yeah. let's, let's So start it can off be software. Like, it can be, you know, hardware. Hardware. Okay. All right. So let's start off with like the actual, like the physical machines. Okay. How many do you, how many machines do you have that you use? Maybe not daily, but like that you have and you like, let's say weekly. So I have in total, I have three machines, mm-hmm. um, which two of them I use daily. And then one is, you know, a 15, 16 year old laptop that has Linux on it, Okay. which very rarely I would use, you know, like twice a month kind of thing when I am nerding out, <laughs> I want to jump back into, you know, actual Linux. Uh, yeah environment and learn something or if i'm preparing for something uh, mm-hmm. but yeah that's that's my those are my machines how about you i have three as well i have my two windows machines and one mac os which mm-hmm. is my laptop um i use both windows machines daily yes and then my mac i'll probably use maybe a couple times a week but now that i'm moving Mm. I bought a new desk specifically to set up my Mac app because I use my Mac for more creative work. And yep, for yep. people who don't know, I used to make like a lot of music. I used to produce mm-hmm. like beats and, you know, just stuff like that for fun. And when I moved here, um, I didn't really have a space to have like, you know, the audio interface set up and like the the MIDI controller set up and like the speakers mm-hmm. and whatnot. So I kind of just had it like stashed to the side. Uh, but I've always used... W- enjoyed using mac more for that kind of work even for video editing yeah um, until i switched to davinci um but yeah those those are like my three machines if we dive do we want to dive into specs i guess we could dive into specs yeah. and like break a break down like what each machine we actually use use for you want me to go first yeah, okay go ahead so i think i was so my two regular machines one is a windows one is a mac so the mac is for my work stuff um given to me by twilio so it's a 14 inch uh macbook pro i don't know the specs i know it's 32 gigs ram m1 pro it's m1 pro uh it's 32 gigs of ram Mm -hmm. and 500 gigs ssd and it's blazingly fast. <laughs> that that's that's what I know that's for sick. sure. Is it? When, so when you use it, are you doing like external display? Like what's what's the setup there? Oh no, for now. So I I know that. You know when I did the setup tour when we moved, I had two desks. One yeah. was for work. One was for um, yeah. personal. I had to reconsolidate because of you know the space. Yeah. Um, because I couldn't move my chair, uh, and there's there's a bed for you know whenever there are guests over and stuff, so I had to dial it down to just one desk. So I have one desk which has two monitors that are mm-hmm. connected to my personal machine, yeah. and then the work laptop I use it just by itself. 
straight um, off the laptop yeah straight off the laptop but i do have a 32 no a 27 inch monitor that i specifically bought for the mac because it supports you you know type c yeah and it has you know usb ports if i want to connect uh my mm-hmm keyboard and mouse uh, to the same monitor it's just that now it's sitting in the box but i'll have to figure out you know a space and kind of a desk setup that doesn't take too much space but i still have both of my setups but yeah so my main machine is a windows uh like your main pc that i yeah my personal machine is a mm-hmm. windows uh machine that i built a year and a half ago so it has a Ryzen 5 um, 5600X. Mm-hmm. It has 16, oh, 32 gigs of RAM. And then it also has a RX 5800, I believe. Um, the, ga- the graphics card. card. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, nothing fancy other than that. Um, it works great, but I'm finding that my Mac is way better. <laughs> like my work Mac is, you know, way better than my personal computer. Yeah. And they're almost the same amount, like when you, you know, compare the costs. But I'm saving really? a lot of time when I do renders. So when I, uh. I tested a video and the Mac does it in 52 seconds, whereas my personal machine takes around two minutes. Which is, I okay. think, a significant difference. Yeah, especially if you work with video often, mm-hmm. then yeah, for sure, that would be a significant difference. For me, my work machine, I recently got a new one. It's a ThinkPad yep. P14S uh, Gen 1. It's, it's like supposed to be a CAD machine, so it's spec yep. out. It's like an i7. It's got like, I don't know, like 64 gigs of RAM, something crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like a terabyte of solid state, all that kind of thing. I'm a big fan of ThinkPads just because I had a, I don't feel like I have to be delicate with it. It's a yeah. great, great machine. So that's the thing that I would use for work. I have a docking station and it's plugged into like my two monitors. But I also have another desk coming in for my new place where I'll have... So I'm going to have a setup for my streaming PC, which is my custom PC. I'm going to have a setup for mm-hmm. my work machine. Then I have a setup for my Mac. So I'm not going to be like switching nice stuff around. Like, I love that. I love that. Yeah, it's going to be... I used to love it when, you know, yeah, I could like separate work from you know personal Absolutely. stuff Absolutely. and not you know plugging in cables and stuff yeah um it's, it's gonna allow me to but so you years. so you will have three desks or this is gonna be still on two desks three desks okay, three desks. okay. so i don't want to move or have to disconnect share desks anything, yeah, yeah, yeah nothing nothing like that um so yeah that that is my work laptop and that's mm-hmm. windows for my custom pc uh, I got like a NZXT build. I think it's like mm-hmm. the streaming PC, but the previous version. It's got a, like, I think we have the same a CPU, Ryzen 5. Yeah. Uh, I have a 2060 card in it. Um, mm-hmm. 32 gigs of RAM. I have two terabytes of storage. Uh, that's what I use. It's pretty, it's pretty great. Like I do all my editing on there because I do the majority of my recording on this machine. Exactly. So it's just yeah, easy. Yeah. Like, because if not, if, if, Unless I'm using like my vlog camera, then I'll do use it on the Mac. But the majority mm. of my stuff for my YouTube is straight like OBS and like yep. screen recording and such. So I find that, yeah, I might save editing, like rendering on the, mm-hmm. the, the Mac, but then just moving the massive files from one machine to the other. Yeah. It, like it adds up there. So it's like, okay. That's what I, I just, do is. Yeah. It's the same routine. Yeah. If it's recorded on, you know, my camera on an SD card. Yeah. Only then I'll probably edit it on Mac. Otherwise, everything because it's on my PC, I'll just do it and then leave it to render and, you know, go grab something (laughs) to drink. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of like physical hardware I'm looking at, I have like a lot. It's like I have to do an updated setup tour when I move. Um, Mm -hmm. But other stuff that I use day to day is obviously this, this like... Uh, all right, let me stick to more. Let's stick more to like yeah. the. Let's see the microphone, the camera, all that stuff is for work too. So it's hard to just say, but, but maybe I want to stick to. Okay, well, I'll just say everything. So I have this mic. This is Sure SM, SMB, mm-hmm, S, mm-hmm. SM7B, something like that. 7B, yeah. 7B. I have this Rode mic, uh, mic boom. P14. 
PSA <laughs> one. Yeah, dude, you know better than me. I have a cloud lifter, and then my audio interface is a Scarlett Ti2. I have mm -hmm. two displays, and these two displays are going to 227 inch, but my main display, the one that I look at the most, is curved. I can't go back to flat panel. I can't. I'm just always going to be it curved. It takes I, time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like ultra wide screens because whenever it is that you're streaming or recording, like you always oh, have to yeah. mess with the configuration. I'd rather stick to 227 inches. So my main the curve is 27 inch, and then my side one. I some I sometimes have it in like por like what's the like portrait mode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when I'm coding, but usually I'll have it in like landscape, just normal, just like off the side. Um, and then I have like two sets of keyboard and mice. I have like a Logitech gaming mouse, and then the 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 Microsoft Design the compact mm -hmm, keyboard. Mm -hmm. I love that keyboard so much. I've been looking for keyboards that are like sixty five percent, so that's the size. Mm -hmm. but that I don't have to charge every other day. Like I have the Keychron, I can't remember what. Yeah, K6 yeah, yeah. K2. Or, something like that. or yeah, the one that's 65%. But I have to charge that thing every 2 days or so and then sometimes it'll just randomly die if it's not connected. The Microsoft one, it uses batteries. The only backside is or like the downside is it doesn't have like a light, but that doesn't matter because that comes into like the uh, other like, tool that yeah, I have yeah, yeah. that I'm going to say um it's small. I can carry, throw it in my backpack so when I go to mm -hmm. the office, I can bring my mouse and my keyboard and I have to rely on the stuff that's there. Uh, what else do I have here? I, oh, I have an Elgato light um, that I my key oh, light yeah. that I have turned backwards instead of uh, because it just bounces off the wall and it gives must, me a much more natural light when I'm recording videos or whatnot. It's no, not streaming. too harsh, yeah. Yeah, even at the lowest setting, the light is like super harsh. So I just oh, okay. turn it over and then it bounces off the wall, which is white. And mm -hmm. the, the walls at my other apartment are also white. Um, so it gives like a nice softer touch to, to the lighting of the room. Uh, what else? Oh, I have like noise canceling headphones, whatnot. But we can get more into like peripherals a little bit later, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for my, my work desktop at the new place i'm just gonna have one display because i use the the laptop display as one like i raise it i put it on like, some uh, books and mm -hmm, it's one display mm -hmm. and then i'll have one like 27 inch there uh and the mac i'll probably use without a display because i feel like when i'm doing like creative work i like to be like straight trackpad display yeah. like straight track trackpad like, i find that too mm -hmm. it's just i don't know it feels it feels more it feels nicer um yeah that's like for physical stuff mm-hmm yeah, for me it's pretty simple. I have Logitech gaming mouse and keyboard. The keyboard is eighty percent because I, like, I try to stick to eighty percent. It's the perfect. Is that numpad? Uh, Do you have a numpad? No. No. Yeah. Oh, so you so have the top the, row. You have function key. Yeah. Dedicated. So function. that's the only thing missing is a numpad, but that mm -hmm. gives me you know enough space to you know move my mouse, uh, especially when I'm gaming because you know you Dude, need that wide range. I, I so I've gotten so used to sixty five percent that. I tried one that was like a with a numpad and like with top row, and then my arm was just like two to the side. Like, I yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, right. Doesn't it feel weird? Yeah. It could be because you come become used to these things. Like some people who are used to are like, but I felt like my arm was like just so and was just like really uncomfortable. Definitely, so like, yeah, I because have to yeah, stick to the you have to go out to reach to your mouse. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, um, but yeah, both of them are wired because I can't deal with either batteries or charging oh, them. Oh, you up. wire them? Mm. Yeah, they're they're hardwired uh into my pc as i said i don't use anything right now for my mac i just use the laptop itself uh, but i would love to have you know a setup uh, for work mm -hmm. and then i've got um you know the camera is a sony a5100 oh, yeah that i use uh, as a webcam with a capture card mm -hmm. um i have a ring light to the side nothing fancy it's you know basic Amazon like ring Amazon. light. Yeah. Yep. And then I have uh the Shure M V seven um and a focus right two I two and I have the Bose companion speakers and that's about it. I have the Sony whatever, it's a weird name. The XM fours. Um oh, the, the, the noise cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have yeah. the same headset. And yeah, that's that's about you know the hardware stuff that I have. The I forgot to, I have so I've 
Yamaha monitor, so um, mm -hmm. HS5s, mm -hmm. but I don't use them because I don't have the space. But again, that, those will be... Yeah. When it comes to like, I'm really excited because I'm going to get a lot better sound because I'm going to be mm -hmm. able to listen better with those because those are flat frequency monitors. Um, I use these Audio Technica now yep. for... Streaming timing. and... Yep. Yeah, time, yeah, and they're just... I freaking, I've had these for like six years, dude. And the cuffs are like peeling off, but luckily you can buy replacements on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Nice. Um, but yeah, physical stuff. Oh yeah, the camera. I, I use a ZV-1 with a capture card. But dude, my capture card, I'm using like those $20 USB ones on from Amazon. Because like my, my Elgato, what are they called? The uh, called capture cards? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the whatever, 4K little USB The expensive thing. one. HD it's 60 like, something, yeah. It's yeah. like $150 or something like that. It like, for some reason, it'll always freeze. And it might be that my, something's messed up with my machine. It's not giving mm. me enough power or whatnot. But when I use this twenty dollar one, completely fine, and the quality is just as good. Like I think you can't get four K, you get HD, but the more majority of stuff is HD anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I use. Is I think yeah, you you sent me the link that you have um, the twenty five dollar thing. Yeah. 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 All right. So as far as what about software tools that you use? Um, what's your, lot like, of your them. stack? What's your stack? Like, what's the stuff that you use the most? Uh, uh, yeah, let's start with your stack. Yeah, um, VS Code. Same. So VS Code, Edge. Same. Um, as the browser, um, WSL two, um, with Windows, Windows terminal. terminal. Windows yeah. terminal. Yeah. Windows terminal app. Um, both. Oh my, oh my I have my preview too, mm. because there there were some features that you know I was looking forward to, but now they are in in public release. So, um, mm. but I still keep the preview and to do microsoft to do perfect same um yeah i think notion um uh, for note taking only on my you know pc though because i tend to go to apple notes because they're just you know flawless uh, on due Mac? to iCloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I have an iPad too. I forgot about that. Um oh, so yeah, I would you know, when I'm when I'm yeah, relaxing on my couch or in my bed and I'm writing something or, you know, taking notes, mm -hmm. uh, is either on mostly on Apple Notes. Mm -hmm. If I'm sitting on my PC it's Notion. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, you know, talking about stack that I use frequently yeah, how about you okay. yeah we're talking about like i guess productivity stack and it's not like tech stack we'll get into tech stack a little bit mm -hmm. the wsl2 is kind of like it. so for the the things i'll add on top of the what you said already because i use a lot of that is i'll use OneNote as well um mm -hmm. depending on what i'm trying to save because i know like OneNote is more so for work focus kind of things yep. and then notion is more so like personal kind of things for the wsl2 windows terminal on so with the uh, like powershell i use all my posh and then with yeah ubuntu here. wsl2 I'll use, I'll use all my uh shish C C yeah shish. i don't know how to pronounce all it my shish <laughs> and then the customization for the term the the yep. terminal is like, great with those um on top of that i'll use so windows the clock has a pomodoro, pomodoro timer there uh, and then you can set up your tasks from microsoft to do to be like oh for this 25 minute session i want to work on this task and then really I feel, yeah yeah dude you need so to look into that i use that every single day windows clock has timer yeah it has a timer so if like i'm gonna open it up right now just to tell you where to go to so if you go to if you look for like clock and then yeah. on the uh left side it says i think it's called oh. focus, focus session you hit get started and it tells you how much you want to set. And then you see nice. there's like a little to do. It tells you to sign in and then you can select, oh, I want to focus this task. And then you can integrate with Spotify if you use Spotify and you have like oh my a God. playing. It's great I was missing on this. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I people saw from my Dana Life video, I'm a big fan of Pomodoro. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So that's what I use when I'm on those desktops. I didn't knew it was, you know, the basic app. <laughs> like yeah, the yeah. App. It's, it's freaking fantastic functionality built into that just basic app. Um, because I tend to use my phone. Yeah, that helps too. But then again, the thing about the having the phone is like, yeah, exactly. Or I'll use the watch. I'll use the watch because mm. I know I won't like open Instagram on my watch because you can't. But like with the phone is sometimes I'll be like, oh, let me check the timer and then I get distracted. Yeah. So I'm trying to keep my phone away and whatnot. But um, 
what is another thing that I use on Windows? Just like little things that I feel like aren't like tech stack related is like, there's this app called Everything on Windows that is way better for searching. It's like instant mm. search. It's like, you know how Mac has like, you can do command space yeah, 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 yeah. and search. Yeah, it's like that. Really, really good because search is notoriously bad on Windows. It's a fantastic mm -hmm. application. One thing that I wanted to mention that I forgot during like the physical thing is that I have a light bar on top of my monitor. Yeah. And I use I usually have that on because it, it makes like your display less harsh on your eyes. And that's why my keyboard not having a backlight on it is completely it's okay. fine because mm -hmm. I always have, it essentially just shines onto. And then if I'm reading or if I'm writing here, like I'll always have a light and I don't have to like force my eyes to, um, you know, it's easier on the, easier on the eyes. I used to have a backlight on the back of my monitor so that would bounce mm -hmm. from the monitor back. Cause what you want to do is the difference between the light with your background, like the whatever is directly behind your monitor and then with your monitor isn't like a massive contrast. So you want to even that out. So if you have a backlight on the back of your monitor, that kind of like bounces off and it gives you more of like a natural like it's like all of this is lit up evenly it that's better for your eyes but i found that the light the key light does that same for me so i don't need to use the back oh uh, yeah the true as well. that's true yeah so you want you don't want like these harsh differences because if you're like looking something something very well lit on your monitor and then you look to the side and it's like dark that adjustment that your eye has to do is not like really good for you so that's why yeah. i like, like have these kind of things um what is another thing that i use for our ear trumpet ear trumpet is great it allows you to individually adjust the volume of different sources of your like oh, stuff that's playing. Nice. So like if you know different applications might be playing different sounds or whatnot, and you can adjust the mm -hmm. volume individually in Windows. That's great. Um, I think that is it for like productivity stuff. You mentioned a bunch. I just added a couple more there. Yeah. Um, what distro do you use for WSL two? Ubuntu. Okay. Oh, you know what? And and Edge, I use a couple of extensions uh, that mm -hmm. I every single day. So the number one that I use is uh, Undistracted, which I highly recommend. It allows you to block. I'm looking at it right now. It allows you to block a couple of things. It's mm. um, you can block Facebook and on YouTube. You can on YouTube. I always have hide up next suggestions and I hide the breaking news. I hide the sidebar and I hide recommendations. Anything that can suck you in. On Twitter, I have hide timeline off, on hide trends, and then hide who to follow. And then I have Netflix blocked. And LinkedIn, I usually have the feed and the messaging popped up and LinkedIn news blocked. But I mm -hmm. highly, highly recommend people get that. Um, you can turn it on and off as you want, for sure. If like, this is the time you want to like be on your Twitter timeline, absolutely. But I just feel like sometimes I'll go to twitter.com to see something. And if I instantly go to the, it goes to the timeline, then I get distracted. Again, I'm always really big on like protecting my, my focus and such. Um, I think that's it, dude. Oh, you know what? Another one that we both use that I really, really like is Wallpaper Engine. Yes. I yes. love the, like, it gives you a nice little touch. It kind of, like, makes me happy to see, like, the animated wallpapers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it gives, like, a little more personalization that I like, too. Definitely. I love, especially, I love the, so the, there are a few that I use. It's different for winters because, you know. <laughs> the vibe. Um, the vibe. It's, the, it's all about the vibe. Um mm -hmm. For summers, I use a lot of that are, you know, kind of chill coffee shop kind of. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we both kind of have the same taste when it comes to wallpapers. Um, yeah. But it's nice to see those, you know, elements. It's like animated and it's very lively. But yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah, that's about it when it comes to my stack for, you know, um, tools. All right. What about s tools that are specific to like tech stack? So, so what's your tech stack? Like, you know, you're working on a new project at work. What, what are your, what are your tool? Like what's the stack there? So my go-to language, I tend to choose Python. Mm -hmm. Um, if you know, not Python, then it's JavaScript with either react or Vue. Mm -hmm. That's my, you know, go-to. And I guess the tools are kind of same. So Edge would be, you know, the browser if I'm mm -hmm. trying some or, you know, building something that's front end related or web dev related. Um, for VS Code, I do have some extensions, you know, because that's so, like, there are so many great extensions uh, 
that are out there that yeah. that'll make her um you know work easier yeah so i'm i'm opening up as we are talking right now um so i have azure a lot of azure extensions because mm-hmm. i'll be deploying stuff to azure so azure account azure functions azure resources there are a lot um i have better comments because then so if you have a normal comment it'll be you know yellow if you have an exclamation mark it'll show up as red oh, awesome. so it yeah so it gets you know it's just better uh, visualization of comments mm-hmm. i used to have bracket um pair colorizer because you know how uh i have if you have multiple brackets um it'll show you which is which so the first would be you know purple the second but now it's built in yeah. uh into vs code which is awesome i have a code spell checker um yeah 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 that's great yeah that's I more also like have... lo- you're not programming language but more so like if you're yeah, writing yeah, yeah. In English, actually it'll check yeah, yeah, yeah. Errors. yeah if you're right especially with markdown so like mm. i know for learn to cloud we had you know yeah everything was in Macdown and mm-hmm. I need to get that because I was making typos. Uh, and then I have color highlight, um, which is basically if you're working, if you're trying to, you know, have CSS, you're, you have the hex code for the color. I'll just pop up the color, um, whatever the color is. What else do I have? And then the, the language kind of, you know, extensions. Um, extensions so, Python, HashiCorp, Terraform, mm-hmm. um, JavaScript snippets. So it's, I think, called JavaScript code snippets um, that gives you, you know, boilerplate uh, code when you're creating a new file. Um, what else? Yeah, I think that's that's kind of it. Get, for the, get Lens. Like, get Lens, get I feel, lens. like someone, every, something everyone uses. Yeah, and then yeah. I have Remote SSH, Remote WSL. Um, mm-hmm. Because you can open VS Code in, you know, a Linux environment yeah. um, instead of your Windows. Mm-hmm. And Git Lens and also Docker. So I have yeah. a Docker extension. Do you uh, have remote containers? Yes, I do have yeah, remote, remote containers. containers. Yeah, it's, I think it's remote great. containers, remote SSH, and remote then remote containers. WSL. All those three are yeah. amazing. I used to have Rust, um, but I think now it's uh, NVS code. I don't know. For some reason, it's grayed out. It might be. I, I'm not sure. I don't. I haven't kept up to date with that. Yeah, but yeah, that's. Oh, one important one because I have been working with APIs so much is REST client. Mm. Um, so you can make you know HTTP uh, requests um, to your APIs using a right, in VS text code. file in right in VS code. And, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, you don't have to have, you know, a second app like Postman. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think rapid API also, um, created an extension now, which is, you know, uh, a rest client that you can yeah. use now. Yeah. Um, I have to test it out, but it looks cool, but yeah, those are my, I think kind of tools around my tech stack. Cool. So um, given that I'm a developer advocate at Microsoft, I try to stick to a lot of native tooling because Mm -hmm. a part of advocacy is, you know, product feedback and working with customers and such. And, you know, you can't have a better sort of opinion or understanding of what is good and bad about a tool if you don't use it. So I try to stick to as much as I can day to day. Obviously, Azure is my my cloud platform of choice, .NET. Mm -hmm. I don't really use any other programming language whatsoever. I do use them to, like, learn. Yeah. Um, but if it's like something that I need to build anything on that is like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. production level or demo level, anything, it's always going to be .NET. Well, I mean, not always, it is now. Um, it might change later, but I don't really see myself having enough time to learn a language <laughs> enough where I'm productive, like the way I'm with .NET. And I just yeah. think where, where .NET is at now, it just, I don't really see a reason for switching at the moment. But anyway, and that's both, you know, back end and front end. I use .NET for front end, like you use Blazor, right? Mm-hmm. Back end, you know, APIs, desktop, um, mobile, like serverless, like everything can be done with it. So that's kind of like the language. 
VS Code, I use a lot of the extensions that you mentioned. I don't use REST, REST, uh, what was it REST Client? I use Thunder Client. Um, okay. It's it's pretty similar, but it, like the way, I like the workflow with functions because functions will, I and also like primarily I work with serverless functions. So my, mm -hmm. I specialize with .NET and serverless with my advocacy. So a lot of the stuff that I'm building will be with Azure Functions. Azure Functions, when you run Funk Host Start when you, or the debugger, yep. um, it'll throw you the URLs or whatever that you're trying to hit with um, your function. And then I just grab that, put it into Thunder Client and whatever else I need. It's still in VS Code, so I don't have to open another application. I think mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing. Like just having another thing you need to have open is always like just a hassle. Yeah, um, it is. I have that over there. Azure Storage, Storage Explorer for anything with blobs and queues and oh, such. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. Azure Cosmos DB emulator locally you can use for Windows and Linux, I believe. I don't think there's a Mac client, so I don't have to create a, uh, an account in, in for Cosmos DB. Ngrok, uh, yeah. you use, yeah? So yeah. the Ngrok is a tool that you use to expose a local something that's running locally mm -hmm. to like the web. Um, so I use a lot, that a lot for like event grid when I need to hit a certain API and I'm testing locally, mm -hmm. I can have the, you know, just all my local host, which is being rerouted with ngrok. Uh, that's a big tool that I use a lot. Um, Azure SQL Studio. So that is like, so you can, it's essentially SQL Studio, but uh, like an, uh, an Azure flavored. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to work with tables and such, different types of um, SQL services in Azure, but locally. Uh, what else is something that I use? Oh, the the VS Code theme. I think we use the same one, a deep dark material theme. Yeah, that's just the one that I've always used. I like how clean it is. Um, it always looks nice, even when you like you want to take pictures or something like that. It's always like a nice clean. Everyone always asks me what theme I use, so that's a deep mm -hmm. dark theme. Um, what else do I use? I think that's it right now. Let me see. Did I write down stuff? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much. Hey, you covered a lot of the. Oh, I love remote containers, but you covered that too. Mm -hmm. We have one set up for Learn to Cloud. So if you want to get hands on with like a remote container, you can you can fork yep. Learn to Cloud and uh, you can see what it does. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I used to. You no, know, I tried out different teams, but yeah, I'm just got you know, I'm like okay, this is not working. <laughs> just use the material. Yeah. You yeah, can get yeah. you can get into like the habit of like oh I need a new theme I need to update this and then it just distracts you from the work. Mm -hmm. So once I found the theme that I like the most, I'm like I'm just sticking to this. Sticking to that. I don't that, really have yeah. a need to change mm -hmm. anything either. I think that's it when it comes to we mentioned. Uh, yeah, I think that is. Yeah, I think it covers up most of it. If you're oh Zoom it is great. I haven't used it I've as much for like YouTube, but I should. Zoom it is a tool that you can run. It's essentially like a background. It runs in the background, and then you can okay. zoom in if you have like if you hit like Control something, it'll zoom in, or it'll like trigger a pen, and then you can like highlight something as you're recording. Okay, that's great. Yeah, it's a tool that people should look into if they're doing recordings. Uh, look that up. Yeah, I think that's it for. Oh, I use Visual Studio as well, especially if I'm doing a lot of like uh blazer stuff because have hot re reload visual studio is great it's fantastic mm -hmm. uh and i haven't used it on Mac, so i'm not really really sure how how well it works on there but on just windows it's just fan visual studio is fantastic it's just such a capable full-on ide because you know vs code is a text editor uh yep. but it's just like so overwhelming how capable visual studio is uh mm -hmm. it's, it's a great i think if you're a dotnet developer you can't go wrong with using it Definitely. But I still the the majority of my work is still VS Code because I try to I try to make the stuff that I do in ways that anyone could work with it. Uh, you know, it's Mac exactly. Web users. Visual Studio can sometimes still be a little too like focus on the window or like things will work this way as long as you're a Windows there user. There is a yeah learning yeah. curve to it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I I think the only thing I missed is a like a SQL client, and I use Beekeeper. It's like an open source. Uh, you know, like how SQL Studio is, um, but it's, it's open source. Be Beekeeper? I think so. That's what it's called. Let me see. Yeah, Beekeeper Studio. Yeah. Though the So for Azure, like Cosmos DB has a data explorer. A lot of them have data yep. explorers that work decently, but there's mm -hmm. nothing better than having just that local tool that, you know, especially when you're running queries. Exactly. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that I covers. Think, yeah, most of it. Majority of it. Obviously, there's things like Git, but those are like, you know. 
Yeah. Pretty, like, I tend to use Git Kraken, but then I got into habit of using Git Kraken at my last work. Is that work, a U, like, U, UI thing? It's a UI based. Um, oh, no. I'm pure CLI with Git. Yeah. So that's what I used when I like was kind of, you know, onboarding um, mm. at ECI and like, you know, getting used to Git because I was, yeah, yeah. I didn't know much. And it's easier to learn Git when you can visualize it. Yeah, absolutely. Like it, it made sense in my mind. Okay, these, this is like the main branch. These mm-hmm. are all, you know, feature branches, bugs, and then there's a pull request. You could see everything. Um, and then now I think I even if I have to visualize something, VS Code has it in built. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, yeah, absolutely, okay, there's absolutely. no no purpose of using a uh, Visual yeah, Client. Definitely for getting started, the GitHub Desktop is great. Yeah. I mean, not not even just getting started for anyone at any point. So it could be a lot easier. I just I've gotten in the flow of just like, all right, I know what I need to add. I mm-hmm. know where I need to be before I do this command, or I know which directory I need to point to. I need, you know, oh, if I have an issue, I kind of know what to do. Yeah. But at the beginning, yeah, especially when you have like conflicts. Oh my goodness. Oh that yeah. Like, what do it's I easier do? to I yeah, yeah, yeah look. Up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you have to reset <laughs> things and whatnot, or rebase or, or remove some cache or something like that. You know, mm-hmm. but things like that. Yeah, I think we covered it. We're in an hour now, so we got to like wrap up soon. But yep. do you have any questions? While you look at questions, I wanted to recommend this. I recommended this on Instagram, but there's a podcast by Lex Friedman and John Carmack. John Carmack mm-hmm. is the one of the main developers for things like Doom, games like Quake, and like a bunch of other things, and just major progress when it comes to development and specifically video game development. And he's been a programmer for like years, decades. So his insight was quite interesting. I think his opinions on things like JavaScript, uh, things like VS Code, a bunch of things was like really, really interesting. I'm not saying he's right or wrong. I'm just saying it was interesting to hear from someone who's been programming since, I don't know, like the 80s or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, there's a point when Lex asks him about his setup and he's like, yeah, I got like three monitors, but I don't have any special keyboards or anything like that. And I was like, oh, it's so interesting because the majority of people that I feel like I've come across have to have like a very, very specific, even us, like very, very specific. Like we're, we're, we're less than like, I guess some people need like a specific layout on their keyboard. Like it needs to be like those split keyboards or whatnot. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. We're more specific to size. But he was like, yeah, I can work on anything as long as I have like three monitors, mm. um, which is still like, you know, something specific. Like you still need three monitors and whatnot. But in his insight into like things that he found challenging with working on doom working on quake working on like being in tech or so early on it's just like really really interesting so um and it's a really long it took me a couple of days to get through because it's like five hours Um, oh okay but i think it was just like super interesting interview for people who are into programming yeah any questions any yeah i posted on ig today um, but since we are doing it so early, I don't know if there were, uh, you know, more questions that people wanted to ask, but I've got two. One well, is... You got to post them earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think Jose, it is said, hello, learn to cloud. I won a free Azure certification exam for, you know, developer associate. Um, before he claims the certification um, I would like to ask some recommendation or roadmaps um, to succeed in this examination. So I think the, the developer associate is 204. This is Azure? Yeah, this is Azure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the basics are, you know, go to the the certification page, so the official Microsoft mm-hmm. one. Then you have learned modules to go through. I, do you have notes on the 204? No, no, no. I, I, haven't, I haven't gone through 204 or like even prepared for it. So I have no uh, okay. resources on that. YouTube might be a, another, John Sable mm-hmm. might have. John Sable one. might have an exam S- cram and then, you know, yeah. proper um, course. Yeah. Yeah. I just, the the 204 is one of the easier ones to get hands on with because, you mm-hmm. know, you have to, stuff like containers, you have like functions. And, and I think that would be important for you to do. Um, yeah. John Sable, Microsoft Learn. Um, there might be other ones on, on Microsoft, on YouTube that are great. Uh, yeah. but I don't, I don't really have any recommendations for paid stuff. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the second one is from Catherine. 
if I can't te if I can't self teach myself Python, is it a good idea to sign up for a General Assembly software engineering bootcamp? General Assembly, I keep hearing about them. I think I was at one of their locations like a couple of weeks ago for this meetup thing. So that is up to you. I think first you need to make like understand why you can't self teach because mm -hmm. I've I've seen times people will be like, oh, I can't learn this, but it's more so not them. It's more so on the material that they're working on. And just because True. a course or a book or whatever it is works for someone doesn't mean it necessarily has to work on you. So understanding why you think you're failing at learning a specific topic is important because it's not just like, oh, I can't learn this. It's like, well, why can't I learn this, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe try different material. Uh, maybe it's it could also be like, oh, I'm studying in the morning and like you can't focus that well. Yeah, you try could, like, different shift routine. That around. So there's a, like, like, a lot of additional things before just saying like, I can't. So once you try mm -hmm. a couple of things, you understand like the way that you learn best and you still think you can't self teach, then potentially, you know, there are like boot camps, but there are also like online courses that you might be able to do that yeah. are more like hands on. Cause I know boot camps can get expensive and definitely, you know, yeah. It's it's tough to like recommend something that I haven't done firsthand. Mm -hmm. My overall feeling for boot camps is I'm just I'm not a fan personally, but again, you could be completely different. It's really like really up to you. Because uh, I just think like if you know, if you take the time to know how you learn, how you best learn uh, and what times of day, and, like set up a schedule and all that kind of stuff and you find the content, but also find content with it where you're at. If you're a complete mm -hmm. beginner to tech, don't start with an intermediate course. Don't dive straight yeah. into like programming. Maybe there's some steps before. Like that's why I learned a cloud has a zero before mm -hmm. this step one like wherever you're at if you're at zero if you're at one or you're at two or three like go where you're at like don't be afraid to start from completely zero if that's where you're at um but then if you feel like you need instructor led kind of stuff then by all means like go for it uh but really look into because i know boot camps have been somewhat notorious for being like not like not worth what they're advertising so mm -hmm. be careful with that but like look into the clauses the conditions all that kind of stuff. oh yeah and ultimately if it's something that you want to do then yeah by all means do it you know some people college works for them some people self-taught works for them some people boot camps work for them but just i don't think it's as easy as being like oh this doesn't work and that's it like i'm not i can't learn like this like give yourself you know time and credit and and and, and figure that out definitely and for resources like once you have figured out if you want to you know try some different resources that are listed in learn to cloud um but few that top of my head i can recommend is if you're like a practical kind of learner you don't like mm -hmm. video stuff go for you know microsoft learn it has you know whole python yeah kind of module mm -hmm. uh it starts from introduction to you know all the different stuff that you have in a programming language and then you also have automate the boring stuff with python it's a good i one. like yeah i like its approach because you're you know automating stuff that you might have to do in your daily life so mm -hmm go check it out um and if that helps um let us know <laughs> python yeah. also is one of those things that's just such so well documented so many mm -hmm. community projects so many communities reddit dev2 twitter like try pissing this question on one of the dedicated python communities um, yeah and on some sort of social media and i'm sure people will be able to point you in the right way but there are so many free youtube courses there are so many open source like repos there's mm -hmm. like there's so much out there on that it's like not niche right it's not like we're talking yeah. about like a program manager that came out like a couple of months ago like no there's mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. much out there lean into community lean into what exists and if you still feel like hey no i want to go boot camp then go boot camp it's up to you but we're just saying like don't kind of like rule out the other options that you have um first because you know the boot camp will get you if you think that's what you need to do but then later on in your career you're still going to need that ability to self-teach because they're mm -hmm. gonna you're not going to learn absolutely everything you need for the rest of your life and career at the boot camp it just kind of gets you like going but yeah. later on there might be advanced python that you need to pick up like if, mm -hmm. and then if you spend the time now to understand how you can self-teach yourself better later on you're gonna it's gonna like be a lot easier help and yeah for you yeah definitely yeah. Yeah, right. I think that's that's yeah, that's all that I had uh, in regards to the questions for community shout outs. We already uh you already plugged the podcast, so we'll have them in mm -hmm. the show notes. Um but yeah. Yeah. Tang. I next week, Tuesday, you might need to get a guest cuz I'll be moving okay. and such. We'll yeah. see. We'll see what we do, but if not, I'll see everyone either next week or the week after that. The week after so that we'll be in do. person. Yes, that will be in person. That'll be cool. It'll be nice. Yeah. All right, everyone. Peace out.